Okay, so following on from seemingly popular tradition nowadays, Disney have done one of their most famous, well-loved, and you know most classic uh, films, and that is Beauty and the Beast, uh, which I think is a very, very good film. Um, and you know it's worrying when they do this because you know I love the Jungle Book, Cinderella was pretty good, but then you've also got Alice in Wonderland and Maleficent, so it has been done wrong before. But it's safe to say that this uh, rendition of Beauty and the Beast is very good. It's very enjoyable. It's not quite as good. Doesn't quite reach, you know, the heights of the animated classic. But I really walked out enjoying it. And, um, you know, if they're going to keep doing it, keep doing it like this. Because this is how you do it right. I also got this pretty cool post on. I went to see it. Probably won't put it up. But I just thought it's pretty nice to look at. So, yeah, I got that also. So, let's talk about Beauty and the Beast. Now, when Emma Watson got announced for this, I was sort of... I was a little bit like, she looks very young, and I don't know if she could pull off the singing. It sounds like she can pull off the singing, she's very good at singing. But uh, I felt like she wouldn't pull off the look of the uh, classic Belle, because I know Belle's probably supposed to be young in the animated film, but they always make their characters look a lot older than they are, and it just sort of... I thought I thought it would feel weird watching her on the screen. Uh, Emma Watson actually does do a very good job, and she was the perfect casting for Belle. Now, if you haven't seen the animated classic, um, the plot is basically... Um, follows uh, a beast basically he's a prince who gets turned into a beast um, by an enchantress and when they first announced enchantress in the very first scene of this movie I automatically thought of enchantress from Suicide Squad doing that stupid dance that she does that's all they could think of in like the beginning of this film but yeah he gets uh, cursed by an enchantress because well he's a dick he's a prince who's a dick and judges people on their appearance so she's like hey I'll make you look like a buffalo so she does um, and one day, Belle and her father, who are living in Paris, you know, he goes off to uh, the market or whatever it is, and he gets captured by the beast after a run in with wolves. So she goes to rescue him and ends up taking his place in the castle. And then it's, uh, you know, the appliances and everything that are around, like you've got a candelabra, you've got a clock who have come to life, they've been cursed also. They think to themselves, hey, if we can get these two to fall in love, uh, the curse will be broken, we'll be human again, he'll be human again, he'll stop being a grumpy prick. And, you know, that is the plot of this movie, and, uh, yeah, it's very enjoyable. If you haven't seen the animated original, this will be a good movie to watch. I'm saying do watch the animated original, because it's a very good film, but if you haven't seen it, then you'll probably um, feel more from this movie, but if you've already seen it before, there is new stuff to like also. Um, so the acting itself is just really good. Dan Stevens does a good job as the beast, you really feel his emotions at points. Uh, Luke Evans is Gaston, man. That guy rocked it. That guy plays a douchebag very, very well. You know, like, he always does this creepy stuff. Like, when he's talking to Belle, he's like, yeah, we'll have kids one day. And he's always pointing at his dick. And it's like, oh, God. Uh, if this carries on through the whole movie, I don't know if I can handle it. But it doesn't. But he does play a cocky douchebag prick very well. And he does Gaston very well. I couldn't have thought of anyone better to play him also. And then you've got Josh Gad who we all know as Olaf from Frozen, who plays LeFou. And it uh, recently came out, like, in the news, that it was like, oh, LeFou will be Disney's first openly gay character. Some people were disappointed or angry about it. Some people were like, he was always gay. And I was on that side. I watched the original, and it was like, he always had an affection for Gaston. He always bigged up Gaston and talked about how muscly and manly he is. So, of course he's gay. Like, how else would you put LeFou to the big screen in live action? Um, at first it is really sort of, it doesn't feel forced, but it's sort of, it's in your face. He is very, very, you know, campy and always talking about how great Gaston is. But I thought that Josh Cad was very good and LeFou turned out to be one of the best characters. But my favourite performance, who isn't even a physical performance in most of the movie, movie uh, Ewan McGregor, man. He just came like fresh off of the success of Trainspotting 2 and then he does this where he plays like a French candelabra. He is so good in this film, I loved him in it. He's a great singer. He does the French accent very well. Um, and Ian McKellen as Cogsworth and Emma Thompson as Mrs. Potts. They're all so good. I love them all in this movie. And I love the, uh, I just love the interaction between like Cogsworth and Lumiere. It was great in the film. It's uh, the original film. It's great in this one. And I just really liked it. Some of the songs and, um, you know, some of the lines come off as a bit cheesy. I mean, it did in the original too, but I mean, there's extra songs in this. There's like a whole new song for the Beast. And at first it was pretty good, but it drags on for very long. Like it's a pretty long song and a lot of the songs do drag on. I love that scene in the bar though. Uh, this song's been stuck in my head since I saw it and I've seen another movie since then. So uh, since I saw this movie, that Gaston song that they sing in the bar where uh, LeFou's singing about how great he is and that everyone joins in, like about how awesome Gaston is, that movie's been, uh, that song's been stuck in my head since seeing it. 
and uh, that was probably the best song in the movie and one of my favorite scenes of the movie but it's just every time Gaston's on screen it's like watching Game of Thrones when you see Joffrey on screen he's a douchebag that you love to hate and I wanted more of Gaston in this film because I was like I'm loving to hate this dude he's given such a great performance but yeah I mean, uh, you know, it, it's classic. They they just rip classic scenes out of the original animated film, which look really cool on the screen. Like the whole Be Our Guest segment is really, really good in this film. It's done so well. And the ballroom scene is spectacular, actually. Uh, the visuals are so good in that scene. Um, it's a better ballroom scene than Fifty Shades Darker, so they already surpassed best ballroom scene of the year. But yeah, um, I really did like that scene. And I just liked seeing Belle and the Beasts um, relationship grow but at first I can't remember if this has, happens in the classic original one because I haven't seen that one for quite a long time but at first the relationship between Belle and Beast just goes by so quick it's like yeah he's a dick he locks me up and then next scene they're getting on really well and they're friends after like one sort of encounter that I won't spoil if you haven't seen either movie but it's just like it happens very quickly and it's not really me saying that it's a bad thing as such I mean it's probably better to get it out of the way and get us on track with the film but it's like yeah it just happens so quick and it's like oh I guess they're together then or whatever or getting together I guess they're happy together in this sort of castle and it happens really quickly but you know it's not a major complaint on the film's behalf it's just me saying I, it might have been, it might have benefited from her getting to the castle quicker and the relationship growing a little more. But, you know, it was, it was still pretty decent. So, yeah, I mean, also with the visuals, like I mentioned before, the Beast at first, when I first saw him in the trailer, I thought he looked terrible. Um, but then again, I thought that about the Power Rangers suits. And then I saw the trailer again today and they looked okay in action. So, um, you know... It's not too bad. I thought the beast looked fine. Like at first he's a bit jarring, but when you actually when you you see him on the screen with Bell, they actually he looks like an actual character that's not CGI. So uh that was good also. So yeah, it has a really good ending. Like the climactic battle that you remember from the animated classic is all intact here. It's really good. They've added a couple of new things, but not to the extent that it tarnishes the original, but it doesn't feel like the exact same movie the whole way through, so that's pretty good. So uh, overall, yeah, I did enjoy Beauty and the Beast. Um, it's not quite as good as like the Jungle Book, but it's still a very solid movie. And, uh, you know, if they're going to keep adapting these movies like this, do it like Beauty and the Beast, because then, you know, you won't be ruining the classic originals that we all love. So Beauty and the Beast, have you seen it? If you have, let me know what you think of it. And um, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. I've got one coming tomorrow. I won't tell you what that is, but it's a new movie that just came out. And uh, yeah, I'll be giving my thoughts on that tomorrow. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all very soon.